Good afternoon, everybody. How you doing? So today I'm going to finally be able to pay tribute to Muhammad Ali. It's taken me a few days and a week to, in order to do it because Muhammad Ali was a person that I've studied that was very dear to me because a lot of who the man is or what he represented or personified because I did not know him personally, I live my life by those things. And I've tried to do my best to continue and to develop as he did. You see, Muhammad Ali transcended all racial groups, religions, countries, nationalities, gender because he was a man who stood on what he believed no matter what came at him you see there are three systems that are utilized to control the masses of humanity you see the first system is your personal freedom locking you up in jail putting you in a in a situation or a place where someone else determines whether you can go or whether you can stay they tried to put him in jail but he said no because he stood on his beliefs. He did not believe that he should go fight a war that was going against people who did nothing to him while he was still not allowed the same freedoms at home. He had his religious reasons for not fighting a war as well. And he stood on them. They tried to take him to jail. They tried to tell him that, make a deal with him to say that you, you would not actually have to fight, but you would be a symbol but he recognized that the symbol that he would be would go against what he believed. So he stood strong and he allowed them to take away the opportunity to take away his freedom. And he fought the court cases. And although he never had to go to jail, he was in somewhat of a prison anyway. Because the number two system that is used was also going on at the exact same time because of his profession he was denied an opportunity to continue to fight he was denied opportunities in, to make money in his gifted profession so the financial reward of living of living a life in our western culture you you need money you need income unless you go out and try to live off the grid but if you try to live off the grid they'll try to put you in jail you see that system is see how it works it's dual they tried to deny him fund funding, finances, and he had family, he had friends who helped him out, and he had speaking engagements in order to make a somewhat of a living for his family, but he was willing to decrease his standard of living in order to make sure that he maintained his standards of belief. He would not give in because he had his principles. It's the principles. <laughs> it's a word that we barely use nowadays. People don't tend to stand on their principles anymore. We just stand on whatever is the new flavor of the month, the flavor of the week, whatever we think is going to bring us some money or some happiness. We just go with whatever it is. But they try to take away his ability to take care of his family, to feed his four daughters and his wife. But he, pers he persevered because he stuck with his principles. The last system, the third one, probably the most important. The system that has been used for eons and eons to control the masses, your keys to heaven. He who holds your keys to heaven controls your life more than anybody else. This is the priest, the pastor, the imam, the clergy. This is the church, the synagogue, the mosque. This is your isms. You see, although he was Islamic and a black Islamic in America at that but he was a Muslim and even when the Muslims tried to control his keys to heaven he would not allow them to control his keys to heaven either because he recognized that his keys to heaven starts here in the inside whether you're Christian no matter what you are Christian Jewish whatever you are each religion tells you that in, that the kingdom of heaven is found in here and that you have to bring what's in here to out there in order to see the kingdom of God they all t say that. Look in Luke. You'll find it there for those who are Christian. But you'll find it. It's there. But he would not allow people to take his religion and change it or flip it or make it into something that it wasn't something that he didn't believe in. He stood firm in it and would not allow anybody to steal it from him. He stood on his principles. He stood on his belief. If you disagree with him, he still welcomed you into his life. If you were a good person, if you weren't there to harm him or his family, he still welcomed you into his life. He had people around him who were Christians, who were Jews, who were Muslim. He had all of them around him. Treated them all the same and fairly and equally as far as I could tell. No one had anything negative to say about him. 
Here's the thought process about the fact that no one had anything negative to say. This is a man who proclaimed, proclaimed that he was Muslim his, for the majority of his adult life. He was a Muslim. Not one person of a different religion said that he was going to hell for not believing in what he believed in, for what they believe in. Uh, actually, almost everyone said that he will be resting in peace, resting with heaven, next to God, in the halls of God, in heaven, different things like that that I've been able to witness and watch and see over this week of what people had to say. And these are people that if they were standing here right next to me and I told them that I don't believe in what you believe, then they would tell me that I'm going to hell. But they would not say that about Muhammad Ali. You see, Muhammad Ali falls into a class of people who have come to this earth, who have come to this existence, that no matter what, no matter what you believe, you will not say a negative thing about them as far as their keys to heaven. You won't say that Mother Teresa went to hell. You won't say that the Dalai Lama went to hell. You won't say that Mahatma Gandhi went to hell or that Martin Luther King went to hell. You won't say that. You won't. Why? Because they have a personality, they have a belief, they have that thing about them that goes beyond the average person. But the sad thing is that I believe that these people were sent to show us that that is how we should feel and think and believe about the average person. That the person next to you at the grocery store, in the, at the bank, the person in the cubicle next to you, on the line next to you, that regardless of what they believe, that that person is a human being that has a divine spirit that was given to them by the creator and just as worthy as you believe that you are, they are the same. Now, we all may get there at different times. We all may have different struggles and different things to overcome and different roads and paths to take, but all paths lead to the same ending is what I believe those people were sent here to teach us. And I believe Muhammad Ali was such a person. So my tribute to him is just to make a few remarks about what I believe the man stood for and what I believe the creator's purpose was for sending him to this existence. I do not, I cannot say rest in peace, rest in heaven. I don't know what level of the Jacob's ladder that he is on now, but wherever his conscience is, I'm sure that he is still talking and proclaiming himself to be the greatest of all times. Y'all have a great day because my greatness is non-negotiable. And if you truly are aware of who you are, then your greatness is non-negotiable as well.